Welcome back. I am the Watch King. On this video, we are talking about the stallion, Sylvester Stallone. Now, this guy, very famous. Uh, he made Rocky, that we all love. Rambo, those are the two greatest franchises of all time. This video is not, if any Stallone fans are watching, this is not a dig at Stallone personally. This is about his recent sale at Christie's. This is talking about how he is a flipper. He is a complete flipper. Now, there's a difference between a watch collector who chooses to sell their watches, right, and an actual flipper. Now, Stallone is a flipper, and we're going to talk about it. I have evidence here, uh, a glaring evidence you can't even argue with, right, at the end. So, uh, let's talk about Sylvester Stallone uh, and his watches. We're going to talk about all of his watches that were uh, three months ago. I'm a little late to the party, but three months ago, this video was released by Christie's. So let's go through it quickly. So he starts out with the 5711 uh, all factory. Now this is an all uh, factory bezel uh, green dial, right? That's what I meant by all factory. So factory bezel diamonds, very nice watch. Everybody knows the watch. I don't have to get into it. Uh, 5711 he calls the cousin from Jersey, right? Super like kind of roast in the watch right there. 5711 blue dial is not the cousin from Jersey. That is the Manhattan watch. That is the top of the top. Don't let anybody tell you anything differently. Then he talks about the only interesting watch, I think, in the whole video, uh, just because you know he wore the watch and he actually cares about it, is the watch he's wearing on his wrist, the Rolex Tropical Dial. He said Tropical Dial. It's a 1680 in gold, I believe, because I had the date. Uh, tropical, of course, a turn. He mentioned that too. So that, that was the only interesting watch, I think, uh, personally. So then he had the uh, Cartier watch. He mentioned this watch, how he got the watch. He had lunch with the uh, CEO or somebody really high up at Cartier, and he was given this watch, right? So he didn't even, it was a gift, right? He's literally selling a gift, but whatever. I'm not going to get into it uh, yet. Um, so then he talks about this Rolex Day Date. Now this Rolex Day Date is the olive, uh, uh, rose gold olive dial. Of course, every single one of these are hype watches. Like, there's not one that's like, whatever, it's fine, right? But we'll get it, except for that Cartier, that Cartier. And, and when he was talking about that Cartier, he compared it to everything on the table, right? He, it's just crazy, um, uh, trying to get hype around it or whatever. So the Rolex Day Date, um, and it's engraved. I don't think Rolex did that factory for him. They don't do that for basically anybody. So only like sponsors and stuff like that. And he's not, he's not an ambassador to... Uh, Rolex. Then he talks about his Panerai. Now, his first Panerai he talks about uh, in this auction is one that is zero, 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 right? So typically, if he, and he was a brand ambassador for Panerai, he made watches with them and everything. So he's selling his one, right, of Panerai, right? So we'll, we'll get into that later. Then he talks about the Slide Tech, uh, his model of the Slide Tech. Maybe it's, a, he didn't mention if it's one of something. Uh, but it, it's that. I don't know if it's limited or not. Then he talks about the pan one of one, this gold piece. And he and he talks about why didn't you make more of them, blah, 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 whatever. So it's a gold piece and it's made for him special piece unique from Panerai, right? So in this, in this list so far, right, you flipped off Paddock, right? Right, because obviously, I mean, I think he's getting these watches at retail. We don't know 100%. You flipped off Cartier, right? Big middle finger uh, told them to f off because they uh, made you. They gave you a watch for free and you couldn't even keep it. Uh, and then you roasted Panerai. Also, you told them big middle finger. So pretty much every brand and Rolex, whatever, right? Yeah, I don't think you're flipping them off. Rolex doesn't care. So you roasted every brand you kind of worked with. Now, let's discuss the big boy because we're leaving this to the end. So the Grand Comp. This watch has everything. Uh, you have the minute repeater, you have uh, perpetual calendar, all these leap, whatever. It has everything, right? I don't have to explain all the complications. You can look them up. So, uh, uh, so Sylvester Sloan got this watch. He applied with Paddock, right? So he obviously built up at least the history with these two 5711s, right? Uh, and probably some other pieces that he bought. And he built up this history with Paddock and he goes in, he goes, listen, you know who I am, right? You know, I don't have to explain. 
and I really want the best watch ever made, right? That's his story. So you apply for it, so he applied for it, uh, and he got the watch, of course, because Paddock thinks that this guy will never sell this watch, right? He, Paddock would never think in a million years this would hit the gray market. So what does he do? He keeps it in the original plastic, which Paddock isn't supposed to sell anyway, but they figured he would open up the watch because, you know, the guy ordered it. So, so he keeps it in the original plastic and he never wears the watch. He says he's a virgin. Yeah. Never enjoyed the minute repeater once, right? So you never actually enjoyed the watch. So he talks about how it's like a painting, right? So let's ask, well, Banksy, not everybody knows Banksy, but everybody has heard of Picasso, right? He's very famous art. So like, let's say, imagine if Picasso is alive, right? And you order, you ask him, you don't order him to do anything, but you ask him, you commission him and he accepts your commission. You ask him to make him a painting, right? Picasso doesn't need to, let's say, right? He's already famous and all that. And he doesn't have the time to. But you, you apply to Picasso, you write him a letter, say, Picasso, please, I really want your type of style in my house and I will I will look at your painting every day I'm, and, and just enjoy it, right? So in, Picasso agrees to it, right? Sort of like how Paddock agreed to it. Instead of looking, putting it in your house and looking at it, you throw it in storage, wrap it in plastic for three years, and then you sell it in an auction house. That's exactly what you did here with this paddock, in my opinion, right? Uh, you could just stare at it through plastic. That's a joke, my friend. That is a joke, and that is very, very sad, in my opinion, um, because a true collector would never do that. Uh, so that is why Sylvester Stallone is a flop, uh, uh, a flipper, in my opinion. Now, there's a difference between. There's a few options. We're going to talk about it. So. Option A is that he's doing this for a good cause, right? I paid very close attention in the video if it's for a charity. I did not see if it was for, like I didn't, there was nothing saying that this is going to help children. This is going to help dogs or dolphins or turtles. It, it, there was nothing said about what charity this went to. So I assume it's not to a charity. So that's option A out of the way. Option B is that he's doing this uh, because he has financial troubles. Now, I don't think this is the case. I see him in the Tulsa King show, right? So I see him I, doing work and I don't think, I mean, the guy's made like, I don't know if he is whatever problem. I don't think he's doing it for money, but that's option B. So that kind of gets ruled out. Um, option three is that he has so many watches, right? That, I, that he cannot possibly wear them all. A lot of the Saudi princes do this. They sell some watches because they literally just, they can't even see them all. They're all in this huge bank vault and they don't do anything. So I could be three, right? So three is the closest possibility so far. One and two are already ruled out. Now, four is that he just flips them to make money. There's some rich people in the world that have done that. I don't know why. Uh, if, if, if he... It doesn't make any sense, right? The guy obviously has lots of money, um, maybe doesn't, whatever, but it, it's just, it's crazy, right? So he does this, I guess, for sport, right? Because he realized how much money, I guess, he can do under his brand and who he is. Then he tells this ridiculous story about Flip Wilson. Now, why this is ridiculous, Flip Wilson's a famous comedian back a long time ago. I You've heard of his stuff. I'm on the younger side, I have, but I don't know if everybody has. So he tells a story about Flip Wilson with this watch, right? With this paddock. And he says that Flip Wilson had this beautiful stallion on his neck, this solid gold uh, piece. And he took it off, right? And gave it to Stallone, right? He didn't, I, he, Stallone didn't say if he had to buy it or not. But I guarantee you, Sylvester Stallone is not... Pay and Flip, Flip, Flip Wilson will not charge Sylvester Sloan for this, for this chain, right? So this whole story is bullshit. It's a complete bullshit story that he's telling about how he's sharing the art and all that. If he really shared the art, you should donate to a museum or go to a charity for something and, and give back or give these watches to somebody famous or something like not even famous to somebody like he has daughters, right? 
his daughters might like this watch or any of these watches. Somebody, it, from what my perspective is, I'm looking at a rich guy just profiting off watches, right? Flipping watches, right? This guy's super successful. He can do whatever he wants with the watches, right? He buys them. It's a free country. He can sell it to whoever you want. But to me, it's like, you got to be kidding me, man. Like, seriously, like, you obviously don't look like a real collector doing that, right? Because a real collector does not keep their, if somebody got gifted or not got the opportunity to get a paddock like that, I'm saying nobody's keeping that in the, in the plastic, except, except for watch dealers and flippers. And that's coming from me. I'm a watch dealer myself, right? Uh, but if I, if I had the money, right, and I didn't have to do this YouTube and uh, sell watches, uh, you know, vintage pieces for a living, right? And I created the best movie franchise of all time. I would never be making videos with Christie. So uh, I'm, I don't want to keep you too long. If you're looking for beautiful vintage pieces that have been worn by people instead of just bought and thrown in a shelf somewhere, because uh, most of these are the case, um, please reach out. There's the video, uh, excuse me, the website in the description. Check it out. Some very cool pieces. I will definitely catch you in the next one. So stay tuned. Subscribe if you enjoy content like that. And I want to know your opinion. Do you agree with me? Or why do you think he's even doing this? Why do you think Stallone uh, is possibly selling these watches? I would love to know. Thank you. And I will catch you in the next one.